Hi, I'm Robert, and this is my entry for the 2011 Moog Music Circuit Bending Competition. Uh, Moog Music defines circuit bending as the manipulation of a battery-powered noise-making device, which is pretty typical. Uh, I did, however, want to avoid typical things like using a toy keyboard or some sort of uh, preschool toy. So I'm trying to avoid things with preset sequences, any sort of frequency control, or anything else of that nature. Uh, I wanted something that had a lot more limitations, so I chose. This little guy. It's just a little two-way radio. Doesn't look like much, but it does have a power button, a button to talk, a microphone and a speaker, and a little Morse code key. So we're going to see what we can do with this, and let's check out what the next steps are. So I've already removed the battery cover to reveal the power supply, which in this case is a set of four LR44 button cell batteries. The first thing I'm going to want to do is swap these for AA or larger batteries. The reason is that these don't have much current on reserve, meaning they might not be able to power much more than this radio without quickly losing charge. Let's get to these little hidden screws down here. Since we plan on adding to the circuit, we're going to need bigger batteries to support all that current draw. Uh, these tiny batteries are actually the same voltage as AA and even D batteries. Uh, the only difference is the amount of current that they can supply. Uh, so we can just create a new power supply with four of these batteries, arranged in series, just like these were. Okay, now we can take a look inside. Now that the case is open, we can see what's going on with the circuit and how we want to modify it. I know right away that I want to replace this button here with something that can be mounted on a different case, uh, since we want to get rid of this one altogether once we get this circuit board out. So let's just pull that right off there. I'm also not going to use the speaker, and instead I'll run those output wires to some additional circuitry which will all be connected to the same power supply. I may replace the power switch, and I do need to remove the wires leading to the battery housing and connect them to the new power supply instead. I'm going to leave the antenna connected and probably not change much of the circuit board beyond the switches, since it can be very difficult to make modifications to surface mount boards without accidentally bridging these connections. As I mentioned, we're not going to mess with the circuit board too much, but it is good to understand how it's working. So, in addition to all the tiny little resistors and capacitors that you can see here, a couple of little tiny transistors as well, and we've got the output amplifier right here. We can look up the circuit diagram for that if we want, because we can see the model number there. Uh, very interestingly, what appears to be a six-pole single-throw switch here for the talk button. Probably won't go messing with that. And uh, Let's just check out the other side because it looks like there are some other components there. All right, a uh, couple of larger capacitors. There's the coil. We've got a crystal here for the radio. Uh, very cute. Let's just pull these uh, little components off that we don't need. And uh, we'll reconnect all these wires and we'll check out what we got after all that. Now remove the circuit board from the housing and I've soldered in a few uh, better wires, these thicker solid core wires here. Uh, those will be good for prototyping, for using with the breadboard, because they'll just pop right into the, uh, to the slots there. And uh, thankfully, the manufacturers were kind enough to label the board quite nicely, so you could see the negative voltage in the lower left corner there. Uh, the speaker outputs are also labeled. So um, let's get this hooked up and start experimenting with it. Okay, we've got everything all wired up, so let's take a quick tour of the circuit. Here's the original circuit board for our radio. It's connected to this breadboard here, which we'll go over momentarily. Everything's powered by this battery pack. It's four AA batteries. It's 1.5 volts each for a total of 6 volts, just like the LR44 batteries we were using before. Uh, everything's going to this speaker here. And uh, if we take a look at our breadboard, you'll see a lot of white space here. That's because we want to leave a lot of room for future prototyping. This part of the circuit is a frequency divider. It's based on a 555 timer IC. It includes a photoresistor for control. And we've got a couple of capacitors that you could see there. And a few connections to ground and obviously power. And uh, over here on the lower left, you've got pins 2 and 3. Uh, 2 is the input, 3 is the output. So three is getting connected to the speaker. Number two is coming in from the radio. This mini toggle switch is part of the replacement for the button we removed, which activated the Morse code tone generator. 
So half of it goes back to that connection on the radio, and the other half goes over to this potentiometer here. We'll show you how that works in a moment. We don't have a power button yet, but if we just pop that battery in, we hear a nice little buzz. We control the circuit a bit with light on the photoresistor here. We've got both a flashlight and a lamp. Change how that's affected. If we flip the switch the other way, we actually have some pitch control here. We also have an indicator lamp here. As you may have noticed, it sounds a little crunchy and crispy. Uh, I actually realized that that's attributed to this capacitor here, which is a polystyrene capacitor. And I noticed something very interesting. When you swap it out for another capacitor of the exact same value, it actually gets a very different sound. As you can see, it's much smoother, a lot less noisy. So one thing we're definitely going to want to do is add a switch to toggle between those two different capacitors. That'll give us a lot more interesting sounds to work with. Now one more thing we can do is bring a fully functioning little front to the party. Uh, we might have forgotten, but this is actually a transmitter and a receiver. So we can send it both the code key signal there, plus our voice or any other sound we want to send along the airwaves. So let's give that a try and see how it sounds. All right, that's a great start. Let's get this loaded into an enclosure now. We're gonna leave a lot of it as is so we can continue to experiment with it in the future. For the enclosure, I'm going to use this no longer functioning electron tube based ultrasonic generator, which I'm told is a medical device, more commonly known as a vibrator. It's missing some parts, including the vibrating armature itself, so I don't feel too bad about disassembling it. 
especially since the entire device can be replaced by a much smaller counterpart with a quick trip to Rivington Street. The parts are still in good shape, so I will definitely set aside uh, all this for use on a future project.